<laughs> hey there. I'm going to continue with my demented Catholic series. And this one is going to be called Adjusting My Medication. Um, okay, so even though I'm, um, I'm sure I have touches of many, many um, sort of mental disorders uh, or conditions, uh, certainly a touch of autism, Asperger's, probably bipolar, depression, certainly anxiety, but I've never been, I've, I've seen a shrink like, or a therapist, whatever they're called, maybe um, I think three times in my entire, I mean like three sessions. I've never taken any kind of, um, uh, I guess it's called psychotropic medications. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not in any way anti-medicine or anti-doctor. Um, I have a dear friend who's a wonderful doctor and uh, I mean, clearly it's a, it's a noble profession. However, I was, I was raised in New England and I do think my, my upbringing has something to do with it where um, we didn't really, uh, the doctor was too expensive. So we kind of didn't go, we didn't have Novocaine when our teeth were drilled. And you know, the doctor was really the last resort. Um, I joke that if you had appendicitis, they'd get you a bottle of ginger ale, but it was kind of like that. And in, in a lot of ways, um, I think that has, stood me in good stead. I'm far from a hypochondriac. I had breast cancer at one point and I went against medical advice. Now, again, this is not, this is not what anyone else should do, but that was what I came to after this deep prayer it was stage one, grade one, etc. But anyway, so, um, but I hear this phrase, I hear a lot of people who are on medication for various kinds of, say, depression, anxiety. They talk about adjusting, oh, something's wrong, I'm going to adjust my medication, I need to adjust my medication, which my heart goes out to, I totally sympathize with. But I was thinking about it this morning, as I was walking to mass, 7am mass, and, um, and I kind of laughed, because I thought, oh, when I adjust my medication, um, when I need to adjust my medication, it's usually because, um, you know, I just want more time become a complete a jerk, at least interiorly, just um, full of resentment or envy or um, judging people, usually when I'm doing the exact same thing myself, but I haven't realized it yet. Um, and so my medication is, uh, um, <laughs> it's usually more, uh, you know, examination of conscience and, and really praying to have my character defects, so many of them removed, you know, to change my behavior, to change my thinking. And that in turn led me to realize how very much my faith, my, um, the way I practice my faith, my Catholicism, my following of Christ is so much based on my, um, the fact that I'm an alcoholic so over 34 years and that I uh, have, have been recovering from alcoholism in a, um, a fellowship within the context of a fellowship that is based on deeply spiritual uh, principles that to me are actually very Catholic principles. I don't wanna hold myself out as a member of any particular group or to promote any particular way of getting or staying sober. But I think it's okay to talk in a general way about the principles of the spirituality of the, um, and, and the fact that a fellowship is in and of itself, I think essential. A fellowship is a form of community. And, um, and from that stems, I think in some ways, I, I don't want to say my, uh, it's not a distrust of medicine or of professionalism. It's, but, but it's a deep belief that that is not the last word, nor are politics. Politics, political change, great. I have many friends who I admire deeply, um, who lobby for that, who devote themselves to political change, who spend massive amounts of energy, time, deep admiration. On the other hand, for me, 
politics can never be the last word. Um, here's what I'm talking about. Um, now, I grew up as a child of the 60s and um, was very much inculcated by the culture. Not that I want to in any way blame the culture, but um, oh, just with various ideas. For instance, that at the time, this was the 60s and 70s, that sleeping around for a woman was empowering. Oh, we're going to be like men and we're going to sleep around and we're going to call the shots. And um, that never worked for me at all. God knows I took it as far as you could go. Um, never worked for me. And I knew, I, and even though I've made my way my whole life without being financially supported by a man, um, at this point, really without a lot of emotional support uh, from a man ever, um, and, and especially now I've been single for the last 20 years, um, I've made my way into uh, careers, vocations that are largely male dominated, but I don't, I mean, I travel by myself. I, I, I I'm a, yeah, so in, in one way, I suppose you could, if, uh, you know, I guess I could call myself a feminist, but I've just always, hated the label because um, I just feel it's so confining. And also because I often, even though I agree with the sort of broad underlying uh, idea, of course, that I support totally, I don't just support women, I celebrate womanhood uh, in, in its deepest forms. So, um, but but I often disagree with the kind of where the political because those terms that's a political feminism is really a political term it's not a human i'm always looking for what's the human term um and there is you don't need a term if it's human uh and i often disagree with the kind of um political uh yeah the sort of underpinnings and beliefs so um but anyway the point is even then i knew something was wrong with me and the raw, of course, I was drinking heavily. I was a full-fledged alcoholic. So I was kind of squandering my birthright for starters. I was sleeping around, which was just so far from making me. I just could never <laughs> make that remotely work for me. I was always deeply um, hurt and uh, depressed and lonely and feeling misunderstood. And, and so I knew... I knew on some level that I had, I was soul sick and politics doesn't begin, to, can't begin to address, it's not designed to address the deep, deep existential questions and the, and the soul sickness, nor can medicine. And um, so when I got sober and you can't, you can't, you can't fix those kinds of problems with a pill. Um, and, and not that medicine really says that you can, although, so, but anyway, the point is, yeah, so I was always like, well, I, I'm looking for something deeper than medicine, deeper than politics. And when I got sober and I found this fellowship, um, it just, uh, it, it opened up a whole new world for me of sort of um, delight at, the stories of my fellow human beings who were coming alive. They were, it was kind of like we were dead. We didn't use that terminology, but we were dead and now we're alive. I mean, you saw people, it was literally like they, they were getting infused with blood, the blood of life and coming back from this kind of zombie-like state that addiction and alcoholism uh, create to living beings with consciences, with the ability to take responsibility for themselves, to hold themselves to account. Um, all things that are, those are moral issues. They don't, they can't be addressed by medicine nor by, nor by politics. I mean, that's, you have to, that's something you have to dig deep into yourself and start um, wondering what kind of person you want to be. Um, so for, anyway, so I was talking to this friend of mine the other day and she, I love her. She's a wonderful human being, follower of Christ. She's 
studying to become a therapist and she's kind of has a, um, is uh, choosing to focus on drug and alcohol. Um, yeah, serving people who suffer from um, drug and alcohol dependency. <laughs> so, and I'm just, anyway, so it's two, it's kind of two, I, I'm just coming, I come from not anti-therapy, but you know, therapy is fine, I guess, as far as it goes. But to me, I, I'm, I've tapped into something that is just to me infinitely beyond, it transcends um, therapy. Well, well, not in any way obviating the need for, if that's what your desire is. So, but anyway, so she starts, so she, she goes, hey, have you seen this TED talk with so-and-so, some woman? There's a pill that you can take. You know, a lot of people just can't stop drinking. And there's this pill you can take. And then you only want to have like one or two drinks. And I was just, oh my gosh, why would I want to take a pill? Alcoholism is the symptom of an underlying illness, number one. There is no pill that is ever going to address the spiritual malady that is kind of the basis to me of all addiction. Two, why would I deprive myself of what, take a pill and go sit alone in my room? Why would I deprive myself of the insanely crazy, gorgeous, weird, maddening fellowship that of which I'm a part. It's like saying, when to take a pill and then you won't have to go to church. So anyway, um, yeah, it's just a different, I guess I'm just trying to get across how I sort of move through the world and see the world. And I think, and, and then politically I'm thinking, you know, we've seen in this, uh, we've seen this past year, especially how how something that nominally is a wonderful thing, social justice. It's a it's a Catholic, you know. Obviously, there's a huge tradition of social justice in the church uh, and in the culture at large. Wonderful, but I, we've seen how that can become deeply ideological. It becomes an ideology where it becomes an enforced code of that someone else has decided they're the moral arbiter of the universe and this, this, these are the words you need to use and this this is the framework within you get to think and vehemently virulently opposed to that kind of thinking um and i it's also made me think about how i think um i mean this is a broad generalization but i think it, in some ways people who are like social justice warriors it's very it's actually kind of a bourgeois um, idea, not that there's, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of bourgeois, I guess you could say myself, even though I come from working class roots, um, nothing wrong with being, but it's, it, but, and I mean that in the sense though of these are, they're people who've never done anything really wrong. They've never really stepped out of the, off the grid of respectability. But if you're a falling down blackout drunk or any number of other things, a criminal, you have gone so far beyond the pale of what is considered acceptable. You've removed yourself so far. I mean, when you're having anonymous sex in alleys, it's a whole different, that is a different, um, you see the, you just experience the work, you know, you know what you're capable of, you know what your deepest sort of sickness is, you know how prone you are to temptation and just to taking the shortcut you know you know the desperate measures that you will take for a crumb of what seems like love and therefore I mean it's great of course and you might whatever your problem or illness or disorder or whatever you want to call it may be of course it's wonderful to have someone help you get food and shelter and your fundamental rights and absolutely all that stuff is super important but at the same time that is not the deepest thing that you want or that you need you in my case I mean, really wanted Christ I wanted a God I wanted an answer or response to the deep existential questions I wanted my um I wanted mercy. I wanted to confess in a way my sins, I suppose. Um, I, everything that the Catholic Church, it turned out, um, 
is have in place to address these deep, deep, the deep sickness. And that's why Christ is, of course, a one name for him is the great physician, capital G, capital P. And um, so that's a little bit of, of how I feel the real questions always go beyond um, anything that, that medicine, politics, culture can truly address. So uh, anyway, that's enough for now. Um, thank you so much. So I'm gonna adjust my medication and uh, try to be a little kinder today.